So when I was 12 or 13, I really wanted to go deer hunting so I could kill a deer and drink its blood from a dirty metal cup. Fuck yeah. The reason why was because I just watched Red Dawn, the, the 1983 not so blockbuster movie where the Russians attempt to invade the US. They're unsuccessful because they're thwarted by a group of high school students led quite naturally by Patrick Swayze. <laughs> and there's a, exactly, the very um, compelling moment, at least if you're 12 or 13, when C. Thomas Howe's character kills a deer and then is convinced in a highly toxic masculinity rite of passage <laughs> to drink the blood because it's his first deer kill, right? So. I lived in Missouri, we didn't do any deer hunting, I'd never been hunting for deer for anything, but that Thanksgiving, while I was going to Mississippi to visit my extended family and relatives, they all were deer hunters. So I figured while I'm there, I'll kill a deer and drink its blood. <laughs> so on the way down, I convinced my father that I should go deer hunting. Somehow he relents and lets me go. And he arranges for my cousin Rodney to take me, who's 17 or 18 at the time, um, and we're gonna go the day after Thanksgiving. So I learned a lot about deer hunting really quickly. The first is that you have to get up really early and not like 5.30 or 6, but like early, early. Like you might as well just stay up the whole night before early um, because it was as if the minute I fell asleep, Rodney slapped me in the face and said, <laughs> we have to go deer hunting. The second thing is you have to wear appropriate clothing or costume. And what I didn't know at the time, but I know now is that deer are colorblind and deer hunters are heavy drinkers who shoot anything that moves when they're out hunting. So in order to be less visible to the deer, you wear a camouflage. To be highly visible to drunken assholes with high-powered rifles, you wear bright orange. So he basically dressed me up like a bright camouflage orange traffic cone. And then finally, the last thing needs a weapon, right? Because you have to shoot this thing if you see one. Um, so he found a dusty old 12-gauge shotgun that I don't think had been fired during my lifetime. And with the gun and the outfit, I looked a lot like Elmer Fudd. I even had the hat with the, with the flaps, but I was ready to go. So we leave, we drive to the hunting grounds, we get out, it's still dark. And I had no idea what time it was. And we walk to out, you know, probably for a half a mile by flashlight, we get to a tree and he says, okay, you're gonna climb this tree to the stand, right? And a tree stand is like a tree house, but it's just a platform. There's no house to it. And the idea is you sit up high so that the deer can't see you and can't smell you, and then you can shoot down at them when they walk by. So I get up in the tree stand, he gives me the gun, and then he gives me breakfast, which is a biscuit with sausage, bacon, and ham in it. Welcome to Mississippi. And then he leaves me to go further into the woods to another stand. Eight minutes after he's gone, I fall dead asleep. I wake, I wake up later because he's waking me up. It's sunny, birds are chirping. And he says, did you see any deer? And I say, no, no, I didn't see any. Um, as if I hadn't slept through the whole entire experience. So we leave, he's like, we're not gonna see any now, we should just leave. So we get in the car, and on the way back, I'm really disappointed and, and quite dejected, and I feel like I've let myself down. I feel like I let Patrick Swayze down a little bit. Um, and I, we get back to my aunt's house, and my dad's like, hey, how'd it go? And I don't remember what I told him, but he got the impression that it didn't go well, and that I still was quite you know, disappointed. So he says, all right, so well, tomorrow, we'll go squirrel hunting. Usually you see more squirrels, you don't have to go so early. And I said, that's great, that, I felt a lot better. I then ate several biscuits, more ham, sausage, few pieces of bacon, backed that up with a sliced pecan pie and some sweet tea, and I was feeling much better. So we get up the next day, we go out, we're walking in the woods behind my aunt's house, and we're walking and we're walking and we're walking, and we see no squirrels. We don't see ducks, we don't see rabbits, we like not, nothing, right? We see no wildlife at all. We walked for an hour, we're on our way back, and I think my dad could sense how disappointed I was, and again, I was very dejected uh, by the whole experience. So we come up by this tree, and on the branch of this tree is this little bird. And the bird's chirping quite pleasantly. And my dad turns and says, well, if you want to shoot something so badly, son, why don't you shoot that bird? And I think to myself, I do want to shoot something really desperately, so I take the gun, I line it up at the bird from like, <laughs> three and a half feet away. And I close my eyes because I'm 12 and I pull the trigger and there's a big explosion and the gun kicks back and nearly breaks my shoulder. And when I open my eyes, the bird's gone. And for a minute I think, oh, I must have missed. But then I see the cloud of feathers that's sort of falling um, where the bird had been. Some blood spattered here and there, not enough to get in a cup um, to drink. <laughs> 
And before I can even think through, like, how do I feel? What does this mean? My dad turns to me and he says, Wow, son, how do you feel? You just killed a perfectly defenseless animal. <laughs> and that's how I felt. I felt like I had just killed a defenseless animal, that I had grief, I was upset, I was angry, I didn't really quite know how to feel. And we walked back in silence. Um, and to this day, I don't know if my dad's just not a fan of hunting. I don't know if he didn't want me to begin hunting because it's actually kind of dangerous. I, maybe he just has a sick sense of humor. Um, <laughs> But I learned a lot that day about um, who I was, and I realized that that's, hunting's not really for me. But also what I appreciated was he gave me an opportunity to, to not be okay doing this kind of thing and shooting something. And I feel like um, I was able to respond authentically to how I was feeling. Because if Patrick Swayze had been my dad, I'm sure he would have said, well, you've killed your first bird, you have to floss with its spine, or <laughs> chew its beak, or something really disturbing. Um, but I didn't. And I clearly learned something, and I have never been hunting again. Thank you.